Alright, so let's install Redox OS, a uh, memory safe wrestling based operating system. Uh, we have the uh, VM set up in Vert Manager, which uses libvirt-d. Um, and right now we're either s we're setting up a serial ATA disk because um, I believe the installer didn't uh, detect any disks, and the only disk we had attached was IDE. Um, see, no drives found. And this is the um, latest version of Redox OS, which is the um, August uh, 13th, I believe, uh, version the, for the dailies. And so, uh, since that didn't work on the latest, um, right here, let's see what happens once we boot in right here, when we log in, what is it back? So it's still the latest version. I think I might have added just then uh, more drives, a SCSI drive, um, a vert IO drive, and it's still, um, the Redox installer utility still didn't detect any of the disks. And I'm running this utility as the user, plain user account. Um, right now, uh, since this is my first live stream uh, covering this, uh, I was setting up uh, OBS and follower goals was one of the things. There was like notifications and follower goals that it will show on screen. So um, I added that. Um, and then, uh, I was trying to figure out how in Redox OS to list like devices to see if the system even sees those devices that I added. I tried like LSBLK and I was looking in dev and there's a file system file that I looked in um, and that didn't work. And then right here, um, uh, it says no bootable device because I believe Redox OS, they don't give you the raw ISO file. They'll give you this, uh, it's like the Z, ZS compressed or something like that file. Um, and this here, what we booted into is Redox OS 0.8.0. So I wanted to see if uh, the Redox installer to install the disk would work on an older version um, since the latest didn't work. And here you can see it's only seeing the uh, the live disk that we're booted from. So it's also not detecting uh, the disk. And, and generally, like when you're installing an, an OS, you run the installer, it shows you your disks. Like that's, you sh you sh that shouldn't be anything complicated. Um, but for Redox OS, with the regular default user account, um, it's just not showing any disks. Uh, for everything I tried. So I, I, if you saw the pop up there on the screen, I was trying to figure out how to show the live stream chat on the uh, video. Because um, I'm like going back and forth in my mind trying to figure out how to get make this work because I was pretty sure that I had installed Redox previously onto a, a VM, onto a disk. You know, see, and then here I'm just adding uh, notes so anyone that uh, is joining the live stream they can see uh sort of like the tasks going on um, and uh it's great that redox os does have like this uh it comes with the terminal comes with the text editor like these are like basic things where it's sort of uh these are nice to have as defaults these I don't consider like excessive, like some of the desktop environments, what they include. Um, the only thing though is even though it includes these, it would it would be nice if the, the disk usage isn't too bad for Redox OS, but it would be nice if the uh, memory usage was lower, which I would think would be a benefit of using Wrestling, but it, for some reason it doesn't. Um, and then here I finally got uh, Streamlabs overlay to show chat so now if anyone types in chat on the live stream it will show up on the video because um, I haven't got my mic working yet for the live stream at least you can see the chat um, oh yeah and then NetSurf 
for whatever reason, I, I test this both in Redox OS 0.8.0 and then on the latest daily. Um, and it will open the NetSurf browser, but anything within it, the mouse disappears and it does not detect mouse input. So I can't close the window. I can't click on that address bar or anything. I can still click on the, uh, like the title bar, the handle, as you can see, to move the window. So you could do like, <laughs> this is what I did in the 90s when we used to use like Windows 3.1 or um, Linux back then with the desktop environment. If I couldn't figure out how to close a window or if it got stuck and it wouldn't close, you, <laughs> you just sort of drag it off screen and ignore it. <laughs> um, I mean, the alternative is rebooting or uh, using kill, the kill command from terminal. But for whatever reason, when I tested it later, as you'll see, it was not working. Uh, and then I'm noted, notating here that I opened up a GitHub issue regarding the installer. Uh, and apparently I had already opened one, uh, but there were no comments or anything in it. Um, and later I end up adding notes saying uh, what you have to do to get the Redox installer to work. Um, yeah, and then I opened up a GitHub issue regarding that surf where you, it opens, but you, nothing else can happen. You cannot close it. You can move it around on screen, but you can't use it in any other sort of functional way. And then I added a note, you know, saying, if I can't get Redox OS to install and be functional somewhat, then I'm going to have to use Alpine. I would prefer using Redox OS since it's in Rustlang and it's memory safe um, and you don't have to deal with all the legacy C code. Um, but this is another Redox problem right here. Well, um, for this one, what was the problem here? I guess we'll see in a second here. I do know that anytime you try to boot with Vert Manager, um, the there's like an audio default audio thing that uses ICH6, I believe, and Redox will just not boot if that's set. So I, you might see me a couple times start up a new VM uh, or create a new VM, and then I will have to set the I sound ICH to nine, and then Redox will boot. So I have opened up a ticket, I believe, and, or an issue regarding that, um, because either it should behave better or support ICH six. Those are the two things that I can think of. Maybe there's a better way to deal with it. Um, I don't know why it just fails to boot. If it has ICH six, that seems, um, like an interesting choice. Uh, see, right there, I was just changing it between six and nine. Uh, and I guess maybe that was it. So I'm booted in. I think this is a fresh uh, Redox daily VM. And then this is the 0.8.0. So because they're VMs, I can switch between them and AB test. Uh, so here, as you can see, I switched user to root. And then when you run the the, uh, GU the Redox installer GUI or TUI, it will show... Um, it shows the disk. It's then able to show the disk. So uh, in a ticket that I opened, uh, I believe I noted that it, if you're running that Redox installer as a user, even if you can't write to the disks, you should at least show that they exist at, or prompt that you need to run as a different privileged user because we're not seeing anything. Um, uh, but I guess that also doesn't explain why it showed the live disk. As your user, but not any of the attached uh, other disks. Um, and sorry if I'm not uh, staying in sync with the video. This is sped up 400% uh, um, just to shorten it. The stream was a couple hours long, and then when I edited it down, it was over an hour long still. So this is 400 times speed. Um, so here I finally got uh, the latest daily version of Redox OS. Um, set up with the uh, disk and now we finally got the GUI installer running um, and it would be really nice if uh, I believe I opened up a ticket on this with Redox an issue on uh, for Redox also uh, this GUI installer it would be great if it was in the the start menu or the Redox menu in the bottom left there or if it is on that quick start bar on the bottom uh, the GUI installer. It should be more prominent. It should be more obvious. Like these are things where when people go to install it, they it shouldn't. You shouldn't have to be. You shouldn't have to go into the documents to figure out how to install it, um, or end up going in the chat and having to ask other people how to install it. It should be right there. I mean, the, the only reason I say this is because 
almost all other operating systems when you boot from a live disk they'll have it will boot straight into the installer or it will be very prominent it will be like on the desktop or in the quick launch bar so that's something that uh would be great if uh redox had that but currently with the dailies and in o.a.o .o, it does not exist um, so now uh, this is another thing right here on the installer. I opened up an issue on this. It is so slow to install. This is 400 times speed. Uh, and see, you can see my comment there uh, from the live stream chat. It's copying over these SVG files, which are just icon files. Um, and it's, this is very slow. Um, I, I think I might have got a response, but I haven't opened the, the ticket, the issue back up to take a look at it. it it's uh, sounds like this may just be a limitation of the file system. That's why it's so slow. Um, but uh, it's also uh, moving the file serially because um, if you look, it's I believe it's going alphabetically. If you look at each file, it's doing uh, either in the terminal or in the GUI. It looks like it's going alphabetically serially. It would be great if it was uh, just parallel and it just tried to send as many files as once. The other thing is, um, uh, if it is the file system, uh, what I notice is this VM only has one vCPU allocated. I prefer to really restrict the resources available to operating systems when I'm testing them because then you can see um, what it's really having, the, what could be optimized basically. So this is using 100% of the one vCPU just to uh, copy these files from uh, this is, I mean, these are both on an NVMe SSD. So these, this file transfer, the whole ISO is only 500 megs. Copying over 500 megs, uh, downloading it was faster than this. And you're watching this at 400% speed. So four times the speed. Um, and this is just so slow for 500 megs. Um, so maybe it is just the file system, the Redox file system needs to be, um, the performance needs to be improved. I don't, I, I don't understand why it would require so much CPU to move files. Um, I know uh, traditionally when you have a large number of files like this um, and you're moving them in a terminal and you're using something like rsync, um, you want to hide the output on the screen because that creates load on the system. So that could be part of uh, why it's copying so slow here. Um, uh, but then again, I don't. I feel like it shouldn't be this slow for uh, basically copying 500 megs of files from an SSD to the same SSD. Um, but yeah, it's almost finished here. Uh, and the, the other thing I kind of question is why are there so many icon files? Like it was transferring icon files for a while. There's only, you know, a handful of apps, less than a dozen, that it seems to be bundled with. Why are there so many icon files? That seems interesting. See, and there it said whatever it was, a thousand or ten thousand seconds to uh, complete. You can you can pause it to see the exact number, but it was it was quite a while. Um, and here I, I unchecked the live disk. So now we're booted right directly to the disk that we installed to. And uh, NetSurf still has the same problem. Um, and uh, let's see here. I tried launching NetSurf from the terminal to see if there was any different behavior. And I also tried launching it as root to see if there was any different behavior. And there wasn't. And then right here with the uh, text editor, the cosmic uh, text editor that's with the daily version of Redox OS. I opened it, but uh, you can resize from the left or the right, and maybe the bottom, but you cannot from the top. And so when you're running at a resolution like this, this is running at 1280 by 720, when the window opens by default, it appears to be vertically longer than the window manager size. So you can't get to the bottom of the window to resize it up. And because the top doesn't allow you to resize down, you have the window spilling over and you can't do anything with it. And then here, I, apparently, I opened Redox uh, three times, and so now this is our life. We have to live with these until we reboot. Uh, they will not go away. I, I think here, briefly, we might open up Terminal and try to kill these. And when I tried to kill them, uh, the process IDs, it, it nothing happened. Uh, so I don't know if I'm doing it wrong somehow, or if it needs to be done a different way. I did open, uh, so there I listed the 
an issue that I opened regarding the resizing, and then I opened another issue regarding the kill. And also here, um, because uh, NetSurf isn't working, I tried to install Verso, which is a Rust-based uh, uh, web browser that also uses Servo as the backend, which is also Rust. Uh, and then I'm just adding uh, in the text editor uh, what I'm doing. Uh, so anyone that joins the stream can see what I'm actively, what we're actively trying to do. Um, yeah, and, and so this is another thing with package. If you do a package uh, fetch, and you can take this URL and go to the base directory, so up to the x8664 unknown redox. If you go there, um, Verso does not exist in there. It exists somewhere else. So I don't know how to install Verso. I was told it's a recipe, but I don't know how to install recipes. So that's something to, to determine how to do. And you can see there, I press Control C a bunch of times, and it's just stuck. So when you use package fetch and it's a 404, it, it locks up the program and you cannot Control C it. So maybe I could open another terminal and killed it, uh, but I just closed the, the terminal. So that process is probably still running in some universe somewhere. Um, and then here, this is where I tried to use kill to to close NetSurf. And so I tried kill, kill minus nine with the PID. I'm using just the, the number in the left column as a PID. I assume that was the PID and that didn't work. So I tried the number from the third column. I should have done a PS head and then looked at what the columns actually mean. Um, because the PID could be something else, but I, was, I, I just assume it's that first column or maybe the third column is the PID and running kill on those uh, didn't do anything. So I, I uh, opened an issue regarding that for Redox. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. From here, I have the Redox OS installed and I don't have a browser. So until there's some sort of movement on um, those tickets, I there's not much I can do within Redox because it, uh, a lot of what I do, I think, ends up being in a browser. Um, that may not always be the case, but uh, it's something where it would be nice to have because uh, some of the time on this stream, you won't see much happening in the uh, Redox OS because I have to go to a different OS just for a browser. So I might end up using Alpine Linux on stream with uh, something uh, lightweight, maybe um, Sway or LabWC, but I, watching this stream, I'm seeing I'm like resizing windows and moving windows around a lot, so I don't know if I, I mean, I would generally prefer LabWC be, because it's not tiling, um, but maybe we'll go with Sway. 